If you are a returning subscriber, thank you very much for coming back to the channel and tuning in on another episode. If this is your first time here, I hope this episode will help you out with your next project. This will focus primarily on disassembling the figure, and this is upon request from some of the other viewers, as a lot of the materials have changed in the production of these particular figures. So let's get started with this project. Now this will be my second video showing you how to disassemble these figures. And yes, the components have changed, and this is upon request from some of the other viewers. Now the question comes up commonly as to what do I use to remove the figure or pull it apart? Well, hot water out of the tap is more than sufficient. The hot water coming out of the tap is going to be a lot hotter than your room temperature. And this is going to vary depending on the water heater you have at home. So if you have it adjusted on high, you're definitely going to get scolding hot water. If it's at medium, it's just going to be hotter water than, than usual. But no, you do not need to put it in boiling water. It's a piece of plastic. And typically, about 108 degrees is all that is really required to soften the plastic. My preferred method is to use a hair dryer. Why? Because you can concentrate the heat on the area that you need to remove. Using water can make the figure slippery and making it more difficult to disassemble. The great majority of these figures now are a soft plastic, more like a vinyl than a hard plastic. So very little heat is required to soften the glue and remove each piece. The armor that's on here, it just came off incredibly easy. Very little glue holding it. Because that's now heated, we can remove the arms easily. So as you can tell, I only heated top part of the torso and the head. I have not heated the bottom. You can do so if you like to remove the legs, the opening up to expose that joint. You can use a flat head screwdriver. Now, if the plastic is becoming uh, stubborn, then you can heat it to soften it up. And you will have to reheat it to close those gaps so that you can clip it back on correctly. You'll find that a lot of the new figures are a one piece unit in the torso and although it does have mobility it is covered by a vinyl or a soft plastic which has the sculpting. If you remove that sleeve or sculpting and then replace it you're gonna damage the paint. It's best to leave it where it is and paint it on the spot.
can tell from this sequence of using the hair dryer and directing the heat to specific areas, it's going to be repetitious. So you'll have to do the same for the right and left side and aim it only at the areas you want to heat. Now these pegs are also very soft and with a flathead screwdriver you can pry them apart and just keep in mind and keep track of the pegs you are removing. Now each limb is stamped L and R, left and right. If it is not, then you should have a marker or some way of reminding yourself what side goes to what side. Because once you reassemble it, if you assemble it wrong, it's just going to be frustrating to redo the whole process. Now if you're going to be painting the figure and the joint is involved in painting, you'll need to keep in mind that you only want to sand the specific areas of this knee joint or the elbow joint, whichever it comes into play. And as you can tell up close, here are the ratchets that hold the position when you are posing your figure. Do not sand the area where you see these dimples and it does have an arrow pointing up reminding you what position it goes in. Do not sand the ratchet that's at the top. Do not paint it. It's going to rub off. This is the back of the leg. You only want to paint the flat surface areas. So you want to grind it down. Sanding isn't going to do enough. You'll have to grind it down and then sand it to polish it out. And then paint these areas which are not only going to be hard to see, but when you do make those poses, then you'll be able to see exposed areas of this. So this you can paint, but the areas that rub off are here. If it rubs off after you did your painting and your sanding, then you didn't do enough and you'll have to go back and repeat it. Now the nice thing about these new figures is the ball pegs are hidden. They are larger, it makes it easy to remove, but because they are hidden, you may not need to paint these at all. Swap out with other body parts of the same color. Now if you really have to remove these ball pegs and you've got to add some force, make sure you use a towel or a material to wrap around the ball peg and then use your pliers to remove it. If you use the pliers directly on the plastic, you're going to mar the surface and yeah, it's going to be visible signs of damage and it's incredibly difficult to get rid of. So.
after applying the same process to disassemble the shoulder and the rest of the bicep from the arm, then you can proceed to paint it also. Now the nice thing about this is that there are no discs that go in the shoulder socket. So there's nothing that's going to mar the paint job. And as for cutting off that piece where the pauldron was, well that comes off with a hot knife, much easier with a hot knife. Although it's a vinyl, it does become hard when it's cooled, but when it's heated, it's really easy to cut. This particular figure the ball joints for the wrist are also hidden so you may not need to repaint these at all because they are so incredibly hidden and it's very difficult to take them out you may have to use a flat screwdriver after heating it and force it in and then pry them out or if you've got a uh, means to get in there by putting in your fingernail under the ball joint you can pry it out On a lot of these clips, you saw me using this alligator clip. And those I made myself by using those tiny alligator clips and then putting those on extensions. Why? Because the air from that dryer is hot. Common sense says, don't put your hand in front of it because you're gonna burn. How hot is it? I don't know. That depends on your hair dryer. So this video isn't about painting. As you saw already, it's about disassembling the figure. However, I will show you this small clip on the paint job simply because it was requested to show how I do the shading. Well, the first thing is choose the color you want as a base. Paint all of the areas that have to be that same color at once simply because you don't want to be switching out time and time again between the base color and the shade color. So in this case, I am painting both legs with the same base tone green. And then I will do so with all of the other areas, what are the arms, the boots, and the actual quiver in the same color. I will then come back with a darker shade. Let me show you that. Now I have already added the shading to this piece. I am now going to show you how I did that for the rest of the pieces. And I'm going to start with the torso. After fully painting the torso, it's fully dry. You can see I left it in place. I did not remove it because I don't want to damage my paint. The key here is to obviously change the color tone in your airbrush. 
If you are doing dry brush, that's fine, but you can only go in one direction. You cannot go in various directions. So holding the brush at an angle of 45 degrees to the actual object, in this case the torso, I then spray from the bottom up so that the relief catches the paint, thereby giving me what looks like a natural shadow. So whether you have good lighting or bad lighting, you will always have a direction of light implied by the shadows that you are now creating using that technique. If you're doing it in dry brush, remember, you have to do it in one direction only. Now here's a before and after again because lots of viewers requested to have this view presented and that's not a problem. Now these gray figures to me are a really fun to work on because you don't have to fight with any underlying colors. So these are great to come up with whatever you have in mind. Now one thing I had to get rid of was that pack of arrows and individual arrows to me made more sense. You'll see that in a couple of the photos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you learned something, then please subscribe. There's more coming in the future. Just remember that the algorithm is driven by those comments, those likes, and of course, subscriptions. In the meantime, I'll leave you with the rest of this video to enjoy. We'll see you here next time.